you guys so much for joining us here at our first seminar back since COVID-19. We're here in Norfolk, Virginia at Iron Asylum Gym. Thank you so much for coming out. Nobody clapped this time. Uh, yeah, all right, thanks. Uh, thank you for watching on YouTube if you're checking this out. We're going to answer some questions that were submitted um, during our seminar. Thank you uh, for doing that. If your question does not get answered here, sorry, go to our forum, we'll answer it there. Uh, and if that doesn't work, uh, you should hop on one of my Instagram lives every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll try to answer it there. And if that doesn't work, uh, DM Austin. <laughs> he, no, he's very active and responsive to DMs, particularly ones that go to his unread folder. He's just, yeah, he's on it. So that works. <laughs> okay, let's go through our questions. Question one, does intra-workout nutrition make a difference, such as uh, Gatorade or other simple carbohydrates during a workout? You want to start with this? You, I mean, whatever. You got it. All right. I mean, I don't know if you have thoughts. I have some. But okay. Let's we'll start with your thoughts. So I think we're talking about two different things with those examples, for example. Uh, if you're talking about uh, Gatorade versus, or like Gatorade Zero, for example, or simple carbohydrates, because there's some difference with respect to electrolyte content there. And for, I think for most people who are pursuing regular, just simple, resistance training, barbell training. Um, the type of exercise that that is, the demands of the exercise, typically are not going to make intra-workout carbohydrate supplementation really necessary. I would say a similar thing with respect to the electrolyte concentration for people who are doing reg just routine barbell-based resistance training like in a gym like this. I think there can be some considerations depending on the environment that the person is in. That would be one thing. And then other specific aspects of their training. So environment, I'll give, use myself as an example who routinely trains in an outdoor garage in South Texas, upwards of 100, 110 degree temperatures, 90 minute to two hour session, losing substantial or not insignificant amounts of sweat. Uh, there, you could make a point for comparing, if I was just drinking lots and lots and lots of plain water during that session, let's say I ended up needing to drink, you know, two liters of plain water during that session versus something that had some electrolyte uh, uh, concentration in it, like Gatorade, although I would also argue that the electrolyte concentration of Gatorade is probably too low for that purpose. I could make a case for using something that had some added electrolytes, some added sodium, potassium, et cetera, during that session would be reasonable, knowing that I'm not like measuring my blood levels throughout this session, but losing tons of sweat and I would prefer to replace a similar type of fluid compared to plain water if I'm gonna need to use a lot of it. The consequence to drinking lots and lots of plain water is you can actually dilute your blood sodium levels down, condition called hyponatremia, a few other uh, consequences that are best avoided, of course, in the course of somebody who's training doing that, it's not necessarily going to be life-threatening in most typical training situations, but you hear news stories every year about you know, college kids who go through hazing rituals and they drink tons of water until some kid dies or something like that. And so hyponatremia is real and, and potentially risky. So that would be the point I would make on the electrolyte front. Uh, for carbohydrate uh, consumption, again, for regular routine, like our type of barbell training, I think for most people it's not necessary, assuming that you're eating reasonably the rest of the day. You, ha you haven't been you know, fasted for 24 hours when you go to lift, in which case, yeah, you should probably get something in you uh, if you want to perform well during the session. But you know, myself, I typically eat anywhere from 90 minutes to three hours, somewhere in that range before I train or consume something in that, in that period of time. Um, so I don't find for myself that consuming carbohydrates during the session is necessary. I think probably some folks who do extremely high volume bodybuilding training or something, they may have different opinions on this, but that's kind of outside my scope or what I would, what I would want to uh, manage myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think for resistance training, uh, when considering ad adding an electrolyte drink, re electrolyte replacement drink, um, one, the evidence on this is very underwhelming uh, as far as suggesting any performance improvement, either in the short term or like your next session being better. So I don't think I could recommend it based on uh, current evidence. If you prefer the palatability, that way it tastes, right? And you're going to be consuming a lot of fluid because you train in somewhere that's very hot or humid or both, or you sweat a lot, that it seems totally reasonable to me, uh, but I don't know that you need to do that uh, routinely. 
main thing that's going to predict how well you do in those situations is what you ate and drank leading up to that, and not just that day, but also the series of days and, and weeks before that. So uh, they're currently the best fluid intake guidelines we have for athletes are the NATA, North America Training Association guidelines. You guys can check those out if you're watching this online. Put them in the description below. That kind of outlines the complexities here. So basically people sweat at different rates, different concentrations of electrolytes are in different environments, trained for different durations of time. So making a, like again, a specific hydration sort of recommendation is impossible. But with respect to performance improvement, like if you drink a Gatorade, will your you know, bench press go up? Like, probably not. Um, and then as far as carbohydrates or otherwise eating food during a workout. So again, the data right now on resistance training is not impressive at all. And so from a performance standpoint, would not necessarily recommend consuming food during a workout unless you personally prefer it, which is the same way I feel about timing of like a pre-workout meal. I personally like eating about two hours before I work out, but I don't like set a stopwatch after I fit, finish my last fight to say, two hours, it's now time to lift. That's just how it ends up working on my daily schedule. Other people like to eat a little closer to their workout or even a little further apart. I agree with Austin, as long as you're not fasted, it's a good idea. And then um, that all kind of goes out the window when we start talking about endurance training, particularly endurance training that's lasting for over 90 minutes, two hours or longer than that. There's actually uh, recommendations from the International Sports Society of Nutrition talking about a uh, actual carbohydrate recommendations per uh, duration of time. I don't remember what they are offhand, but they actually give like a carbohydrate recommendation. And I think that would be a good place to start if you're an endurance minded individual, but then I, I'd have to ask you like, why are you watching the Marble Medicine YouTube channel? It's the wrong channel for you. <laughs> they still want to get jacked, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. fine. So in relation to your resistance training, like you don't need any goo packs or like, you know. Uh, what else would you, would you have? If you, were, if you were running a marathon and you knew that you needed a snack in the middle, what would be your snack? I, I know what mine is, but you go first because I know you like answering stuff on the spot. <laughs> Uh, well, if you're going to have to consume it while you're running, mm -hmm. then I kind of tend to agree that those kind of gel pack things are fairly quick and convenient and easy to throw down instead of something you need to chew. Sure. Well, one, I'm not a very fast runner. I know this surprised you. And certainly if I'm running a marathon, I'm not moving very quickly. Okay. So, so you're going to sit down and have a meal because you may as well. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. You're not winning. <laughs> I'm definitely not winning. The whole idea is to finish. And I think, you know, I don't want, but I don't want to get sick later either. Okay. So for me, it's going to be an Elvis Presley, which is a grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> with a banana. And that's delicious. Yeah. That won't work. Well, I'm not going to run with it, but I wasn't running in the first place. I was already walking. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, probably a beer. It's got a bunch of electrolytes in it good at replen you know, rehydrating and uh, also takes the edge off because I'm like, should I really keep going? Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs>